So early in a differential calculus class, you learn something called the product rule. In other words, this rule for taking the derivative of the product of two functions. And usually in that class, that's extended to the product of three functions or four functions, but maybe you don't exactly write that formula down. You just kind of do it as needed. And then perhaps you've also seen a product rule for the nth derivative of two functions. But I was thinking, how big could we go? Could we make some sort of ultimate formula for the product rule? And by that I mean the nth derivative of the product of m functions. And so that's what we're going to do today. And so we'll prove this result right here, that the nth derivative of this product f1 up to fm is equal to this crazy sum right here. Okay, so let's parse through this sum. This is the sum over all k1, k2, k3 up to km, where those are non-negative, and they sum to n. And then the object that we're summing is n factorial over k1 factorial times k2 factorial all the way up to km factorial. And then after that, we have the k1st derivative of f1, the k second derivative of f2, all the way up to the kmth derivative of f m. So we could do a little example of this pretty easily. Perhaps we could do the second derivative of the product of three functions. So we've got f1 of x, f2 of x, and f3 of x. And what we'll see is this is going to be the second derivative of f1 times f2 times f3. And so that would be like k1 equals 2, k2 and k3 equal 0. And we're attached to a coefficient of 1 because what we'll have is 2 factorial over 2 factorial times 0 factorial times 0 factorial. Now some companions of this would be like f1 times f2 double prime times f3 and f1 times f2 times f3 double prime. And so those would be all the ones that include what I'll call pure second derivatives. And then, well, we've got the second derivatives like this. So 2 times f1 double prime, or sorry, times f1 prime, times f2 prime, times f3. And so that would be associated to k1 and k2 being 1 and k3 being 0. So we end up with 2 factorial over 1 factorial times 1 factorial times 0 factorial. And then we've got the companions of this, which are like f1 prime, f2, and f3 prime, and f1, f2 prime, and f3 prime. And so I would say that this is maybe the smallest example that's outside of the realm of what you would just kind of by hand see in a calculus type class. But as you see, it gets pretty big. I know the coefficients are just one and two, but that's really because this uh, factorial object simplifies so nicely when we just take second derivatives. Okay, so now I'd like to prove this result and we're going to do it by induction. And so let's assume that we have proven a base case. Notice the base case could even really just be the zeroth derivative, which doesn't do anything at all. And here we've got the n plus first derivative of this product f1 to fm. So I'd like to observe that that is going to be the first derivative of this sum over here. So let's get that sum written. Maybe I'll leave off this fact that they have to be positive or non-negative. We'll just keep that in mind. So we've got our n factorial over the product of all of these k factorials. And then we've got all of our appropriate derivatives. Okay. And now, of course, the derivative is a linear operator, so we can bring it inside of that sum. And then when we bring it inside of that sum, we can also bring it inside of the constant multiple. And then we are simply taking the derivative of that product f1 
derivative k1 all the way up to the kmth derivative of fm. So let's see what we have if we get that written out. Okay, so I've got my factorial type object. And then of course, if I take the first derivative of a product, I simply get a sum of, well, a bunch of terms where I've taken the derivative one at a time. So this will be like f1 to the k1 plus one times f2, the k second derivative, all the way up to fm, the k mth derivative. So that'll be my first derivative. Well, I, I guess like, derivative of the first function. And then next, I'll have the k first derivative of f1, and then, let's see, the k second plus two derivative of f2, all the way up to the k mth derivative of fm. And then of course, I've got a bunch of terms in the middle, and then at the very end, I'll have the k first derivative of f1, all the way up to the km plus first derivative of fm. Okay, nice. But now what I'd like to do is smush all of these together into a sum. And well, let's see, our sum could index over which thing is having the one added. So perhaps it would be something like this. We've got the sum as j goes from one to m and then that's uh, outside of the sum over all of our k's. So that would be k1 up to km summing to n. Then I've still got this, n factorial over k1 factorial all the way up to km factorial. And then I've got f, let's see, k1 uh, sub one x, so that's the k first derivative of f1. And then this is gonna be all the way up to the kj plus first derivative of fj. And then I've got my k nth derivative of fm. So I've got something like that. Okay, nice. And now what I'll do is I'll re-index all of those inner sums. So, well, what does that really mean? Well, why would I wanna do that, I guess? Well, I'd like to do that so I can make all of these derivatives the same. So in other words, I'd like to have a k first derivative, a k second derivative, a kj derivative, and a k mth derivative. Now I can do that by taking all of my kj's here, and here I'm actually re-indexing all of these. I'm just gonna do it all in one step. And I'm gonna replace all of those kj's with kj minus one. Okay, so let's see what effect that has. So I've still got my sum as j goes from one to m, and then I've got my sum over k1 added up to km. But now it's important to notice that this k1 added up to km is now equal to n plus one. Because one at a time, I'm replacing these k1s with k1 minus one, or the k2 with k2 minus one. But if we have k1 minus one plus k2 plus k3 all the way up to km equals n, well, moving the minus one to the other side of the equation in all of these equations means that we have an n plus one on the other side. Okay, cool. So now we've got n factorial over k1 factorial all the way up to kj minus one factorial that right? Yeah. And then all the way up to km factorial. So the one that I've changed is this kj minus one. And then I've got this k first derivative of f1 all the way up to the kmth derivative of fm. Okay, so now let's see what we can do with this. In fact, we're only a couple of steps left. So thanks for sticking around this long to the video. Make sure and like the video or give it a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, think about subscribing, it really helps us out. Okay, so this is where we just left off. We've got this sum over this J index and then the sum over all of these K indices. We've got this factorial thing, which is uh, an N factorial over the product of these K factorials, the KJ having a one subtracted and then all of those derivatives. So now what I'm gonna do is change the order of summation. I'm gonna write this as the sum as K1 uh, plus Km equals N plus one. And then inside of that, 
I'm going to have this sum as j goes from 1 to m of my n factorial over k1 factorial all the way up to kj minus 1 factorial all the way up to km factorial. And then outside of that entire sum, I'll have these derivative type terms. Okay, nice. So we've got something like that. But now what I'd like to do is observe that I've got all these fractions that I'm adding together. Now I'd like to push them together by finding a common denominator. So, well, perhaps I could do that by multiplying each of these by kj. So what happens if I do that? Well, I'm going to end up with a kj in the numerator, and then the denominator will have this minus one term canceled, which means my denominator is simply k1 factorial times k2 factorial all the way up to km factorial. It doesn't have anything to do with j, which means I can factor it out. Okay, so let's see. I've got this sum of k's that I'm summing over. And now, factored out of this inner sum, I have uh, n factorial over k1 factorial all the way up to km factorial. And then I've got this sum j equals 1 to m of kj. That's all that's left after factoring that stuff out. And then I've got this thing right here, which is my derivative type term. Okay, but now, uh, I'd like to observe that we're essentially all the way done because notice this condition right here means that k1 plus km equals n plus 1, but that's exactly what we have here. This is the sum k1 plus k2 all the way up to km. So we know that this is equal to n plus 1. But now what we can do is take this n plus 1, combine it with this n factorial to an n plus 1 factorial. But then, finishing it all off, writing down this again with all of the stuff that we have simplified, we end up with n plus 1 factorial over this product of the k factorials and then our derivative term as needed. But now what we've just done is we've used the nth version of this formula to prove that the n plus first version of this formula also holds, which is exactly how you prove something by induction. Okay, so now before we finish off, I'd like to give a little bit of a combinatorial proof of this result as well. Okay, so here's a quick combinatorial interpretation of what's going on here. So I think it's pretty clear that if you take the nth derivative of this product, you'll have the sum over this k1 added to km equals n, where all those are non-negative, and then the derivatives like we had before times some number. And I think combinatorially we can quickly argue that that number is equal to the number of partitions of an n element multiset where each type of element is repeated k, j times, where there's a total of m types of things. So what does that really mean? Well, you can think of it like this. We can take our nth derivative, so this is our nth derivative right here, and we can split it up into the product, or maybe the composition really, of the k first derivative of the yellow derivative, the k second derivative of the blue derivative, so on and so forth, the k mth derivative of the pink derivative. Now, if we think about all of these as being different, then, and what I mean by all of them being different, I mean all of these yellow derivatives are different, all of the blue derivatives are different, all of the pink derivatives are different, and so on and so forth. So anyway, if all of those derivatives are different, there are n factorial ways of distributing those derivatives around the functions. But of course, all of those derivatives are not different. K1 of them are yellow, and how many ways are there to uh, permute those derivatives. Well, there's k1 factorial. So we've got to divide by that because all of the ones that are just permutations of the yellow elements in different places are the same. So we've got to divide by the k1 factorial. Similarly, all the blue ones can be permuted and give you the same thing. That would be k2 
2 factorial, and so on and so forth, km factorial. But now, what do we really mean by the colors? Well, the colors are what is applied to which function here. So these yellow derivatives can be thought of as being applied to the f1 function. The blue derivatives can be applied to the f2 function, and so on and so forth. And that's a good place to stop.